I got a lot of requests in my YouTube comments to make a video on vocal comping. So here we go. In part one, I'm going to show you how to do vocal comping and just recording and comping in Pro Tools. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, we're going to discuss today vocal comping in Pro Tools. I got a lot of requests for this in my YouTube comments, so here it is. First, let's talk about what vocal comping is. When you're comping vocals and recording vocals with comping in mind, you're literally basically recording takes and you're saving everything. The idea is that you're gonna comp everything up into the best take. Now you can do this with every DAW and I'm gonna do another video here next with Ableton, so stay tuned for that next week. But I like to record in Pro Tools, so I'm starting with this DAW. I've been an avid Pro Tools user for years. And if you're curious to know the differences between Pro Tools and Ableton, I have a video on that. I'll leave you a link up above. Now let's get into it. If I'm starting out and recording vocals, typically, as you can see on my screen, I'd have a track with either a two track of the song that we're recording to or all the stems. Um, these days it is common to kind of pass files back and forth between studios. So you might just have a two track mix, which is fine. But if you did have your two track mix, that'd be at the top or however you like to lay out your session. And what I like to do is I like to create a bunch of different you know, tracks. Let's just start with eight. And I'll leave them called audio for now or you can call them what you'd like, but we're gonna end up renaming these. So I have all of my inputs set to the same because we're essentially gonna be using the same mic if we're using a vocalist. So that's the, you know, the purpose of this. And what I like to do is I like to preset up some tracks. So maybe you call it mains or main one, main two. Let's just do main one, main two, and then back one. Depends how many backs you like to do. You know, you could do something like four backs, three backs, whatever you prefer. And then that gives you a couple options for say the chorus. So uh, C2, let's make a few more tracks. Typically, I usually have two backs, so what I'll do just for the purpose of this video is I'll just go ahead and and just change these. And mind you, this is not fixed. You can always add more as you need. Now, the trick to comping vocals is before you begin recording, you set up your tracks and you make your first take. So, for example, I just selected all and hit the drop down here and put new, and that put me on take two. The reason for this is now you have this first take as your composite or everything you're going to comp up to. So I'm going to just use my own vocals as an example here. So let's go ahead and record myself and take this loop off. So let's get into some of the tests here of how you can actually comp some vocals. Let's say this is our main vocal track. I'm going to turn the record enable on and let's go ahead and just run a recording. This is a test of comping vocals, so you can see how it's actually done. And I just made a mistake, so I need to edit this part. And, okay, so the vocalist goes, you got one take. Let's do a new one. And they go for a second take. This is a test of comping vocals. And this is going to correct the mistake I just made. And obviously, this is not perfect. Now remember, if you're recording to music, you're gonna be recording with a beat, so things are gonna be more in line. If you look at the difference between the two, they're slightly different. Obviously, I'm not recording to anything, I'm just recording myself talking on this video. And you would do that for as many takes as you possibly want. Now, you can easily switch between these, or you can actually open these up into lanes. So if you wanted to open them up into lanes, just go ahead and select playlist there. And as you can see, if I go back to the first one, now I have two playlists. And let's make a new one here. I wanna do a third one. This is an example of a third take with comping vocals. And what I wanna show you is how I'm going to edit this together. So I didn't say the same thing on each one of these, which is going to be a problem, but for the purpose of what I wanna show you, it's not gonna matter. So let's comp this up. Now, one of the things that I like to do is you can solo. This is a test of comping vocals, so you can see how it's actually done. 
one of the things that I like to do is I like to leave a notepad next to me while I'm recording and I like to take note of the good takes that I hear. So there's less work to do because imagine if you have 20, 25 of these things and you can have that for every track that you record. Remember, we have the main two, we have backs, we have choruses, you could have ad lib tracks. And when I'm recording vocals, I literally, I literally record everything as new takes. Even mistakes, you never know when you're gonna catch that one awesome take that might be a mistake and then you have it. That's the beauty of using composites and comping things up. So let's take this for example. This line was good. I'm gonna go ahead and just copy that right above. And so you could see that you literally just, you could work in a grid mode. If you're on a grid, which is very handy, if you put the BPM in, you literally can just copy and paste by grid so you know you're perfect. And boom, there's my first composite. And so then maybe this part's good. And that's the second composite. And then you're like, oh, well, and obviously, this and obviously this is not perfect and and i just made a mistake so i need to edit this part and so maybe you like this right here but i like and i just and i don't you know and obvious and so maybe this part and obviously i like better you know or maybe this last one and what i want to show you is how i'm going to edit this together so you know what, I kind of like that. And what I want to show you is, and then so now that you've got your composite out of see these, these three takes, I can add some fades to clean it up. But before I do that, you might want to strip silence. This is a great feature of Pro Tools. And I'm not going to show you all the features, but if you have strips that you need to strip silence, you can do so. And so this way it can get rid of some of that silence. You see here, you can strip things out. This is just, a, when, when doing vocal cleanup, this is part of the tools that I use. But there's not a lot of silence here, so we're gonna leave that and add some fades. And now I've got my main track and I don't have to view these playlists anymore. This is a test of comping vocals. So you can see how it's actually done. And what I wanna show you is how I'm going to edit this together. Literally, you can comp in words too. So let's go ahead and look th at this playlist again. And I said the same thing in these three spots. But you know what? I don't like of comping vocals. That one of comping vocals. I like how I go comping vocals. So let's take that and put that right there. And now you see, if you want to get in a little more precise, you know, I have a little chop there. So may I drag that right out? And you can kind of get into the weeds with this, but the point is, is you want to make your edits and fades clean. I don't want to have a gap because then I'm just going to have a space of dead air and that's not good. So let's take that out and then you can adjust this and see if there's anything there. It doesn't look like it. And so now I just cut into that whole phrase and let's put these fades back. This is a test of comp, whoops, let's take this off. This is a test of comping vocals. So you can see how, and look, now I just took that same phrase and put two phrases together. You can literally do that with words. The more intricate you get, you can, you can almost make the perfect vocal take out of all of the pieces. You can take the best sections, but the most important thing to remember is that you make it sound natural. That is key. You don't want these edits and these comp slice points to, to sound like you did that. So always try to comp things that have the same relative tone, the same volume. You can adjust the volumes if you need a little bit. You could literally go in, say, you know, I want to turn the volume down of this word. I could tab the transient, slice this out, and you could even use this region volume if you want to. Uh, one of the newer features of Pro Tools that didn't exist in the really old features of Pro Tools. So really, you know, comping vocals is an art in its own and it can be a very handy tool. You know, these days there really isn't nothing but the, back in the day you had to get that perfect take all the way across. These days you really can comp that stuff up, but pro musicians will still try to get that perfect take and pro vocalists, I mean, although you can comp, I, I still try to minimize the amount of comps. I only do it if necessary. I try to take the best of the best, but if I have a really good take all the way of one verse or all three verses, 
I'll use that and maybe a word was messed up or maybe something's a little out of key. You can then, you know, use an auto tune or a Melodyne later and fix that up. But this is the basic idea of comping vocals. This can be done with instruments. It's a little bit harder to do with drums because you're gonna have mic bleed, but as long as you keep all the mics in the same place and it, it can be done, it's a little trickier, especially if you're using multiple mics. But I hope this helps you out. Stay tuned for next week on how to do this in Ableton. If you have any questions on vocal comping or composite recording in general, please shoot me a comment down below. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and the bell notification will keep you up to date. My name is Freddie from Distinct Mastering, and have a great day.